today I'll be discussing the chapter alkene. Alkene means the in double burn means in double burn. We know in double burn, in triple bond, in single bond between carbon atoms. So today we are going to discuss the alkene. So you understand that C double bond C if is present then we call alkene. For example, this this this. Let's say it is called ethene. It is called ethene because two carbon atoms one two. So it it is the word root. It is the word root. Word root and in is the primary suffix. Primary suffix. It is the primary suffix. So it is basically it is basically alkene or ethene. So you can see this is the alkene molecule. This is the alkene molecule. This is carbon. This is carbon. This two carbon. This is hydrogen towards us. Towards us. This hydrogen towards the viewer. I mean, away from the viewers like this. H, in the backward of the back side of the plane. This is a plane. And again, this hydrogen. This is like this. This hydrogen. And this is this. It's basically like this. H. And one pi bond definitely will be uh, by two plus zero, two plus zero overlapping, and and the sigma bond is basically over here. One is sigma bond, one is pi bond. So it is carbon, carbon, two hydrogens like this, two hydrogens. So therefore, hold the molecule. You can see that this is a planar. It is in the same plane. All carbon atoms, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. This is in the same plane. So therefore, the molecule is optically inactive because if you consider this is a plane of symmetry. So we can consider this is the plane at which they are existing basically. It is the plane of symmetry. So therefore molecule is optically inactive. Optically inactive. So this is what the alkene molecule is. So therefore it is a planar molecule. So obviously what? The electron cloud. If you see the MO diagram for this it is a valence bond theory diagram I am drawing. If you talk about MO diagram it will be like this. This is pi electron cloud above and below the plane. Let's say it is plus minus and there is a hydrogen. And this is a hydrogen, this is the ethene molecule I'm talking about. This is hydrogen, this is hydrogen. I'm talking about the ethene molecule. So this is the plane at which ethene molecule exists. That is how we can say that the XY plane. This is the XY plane. So we'll talk about the synthesis of alkene, how we can produce alkene. For example, from alkyl halide. Alkyl halide. Last time in the reaction mechanism, I have shown that the elimination process is only the process by which you can produce alkene. For example, if I say C, 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 C. Let's say over here and over here let's say H2, it is an H, let's say it is your Cl, let's say it is an H, H, it is an H, H3, let's say like this, H3. This is a compound, let's say this is a compound. In this compound, if I use, let's say, alcoholic KOH, generally we use alcohol as ethanol basically ethanol C2H5OH ethanol and heating around 60 degrees Celsius if we heat approximately so what you get basically the loss of this hydrogen and loss of this chlorine takes place because you know here the base basically is C2H5O minus K plus this is the base that the base is very small the base is very small ethoxide is a very small base so obviously what it does is that c2h5o minus comes like this attacks this hydrogen why this hydrogen because there is a chlorine withdrawal 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 so there is little little supply definitely delta plus little reduction little reduction but here also delta plus is a beta also there is a beta carbon so this is a beta carbon there is also delta plus little more but things that doesn't matter because this Carbon chlorine, carbon chlorine electronegative difference is not very much, therefore the difference of pooling will not be very much. So obviously this hydrogen is almost nearly acidic to this and this hydrogen is getting lost. So obviously this comes like this and this comes like this. So therefore you come across the product CH3, it is a CH, double bond CH, CH3, obviously two products you will get trans and as well as cis, trans will be the major, trans will be major and will get cis also ch3ch double bond ch ch3 also will get cis as the product and it will be minor so therefore try to understand here my dear, my dear friends this is chlorine 
tomorrow we can use as bromine or we can iodine if the base size is small here you should mention you should remember the base is small in size base is small small in size so in that case the alkene we get is called the butuene 1 2 3 4 it may be transbutuene it may be cisbutuene obviously transbutuene will be the major product and this product is called sweat zeps elimination product so sweat zeps s a y e t z e w f sweat zeps elimination product elimination product so therefore try to understand that you get the product as sweat zef elimination product where sweat zef product means that number of hyperconjugation hydrogen is 3 over here 3 therefore 6 hyperconjugation hydrogen is there this is the only possibility by which the alkene can be stabilized so 6 hyperconjugation in this butuene is more and more stable suppose if it goes from here so you get only 2 hydrogen for hyper if double bond forms over here you get 2, two hydrogens for hyperconjugation so that is not the process here in the case if chlorine bromine iodine are basically the living group in that case with the small base in size we get the sweats of elimination product this is let's say case one let's we talk about case two in case two let's say i'm taking again the alkene is this ch2 it is h it is ch it is your let's say f or n plus or p plus or s plus like this the living group over here let's say ch it is a h and is ch3 now my dear friends just look at over here the fluorine electronegativity is 4.0 and carbon is 2.6 nitrogen plus is almost 3.5 so these are highly electronegative elements with the positive charge so it means what the withdrawal of the electron cloud will be tremendously high so if it is high obviously this pooling will be distributed in both the sides but since this is separation of the delta plus charge over here and this is strong pooling so obviously this beta hydrogen this beta hydrogen is more acidic more more acidic than this hydrogen this is more acidic as well as less sterically crowded more acidic and less sterically crowded less sterically crowded you understand what does it mean less sterically crowded because this is a methyl group which will cause steric repulsion to the base well in com will coming towards the hydrogen atom so obviously now if i use a base like let's say oh minus or any base you can use then obviously what oh minus in alcohol c2h5oh obviously what this gives you c2h5o minus by reaction and this c2h5o minus will come and take this hydrogen actually take this hydrogen actually because it's tremendous acidity so it will form a double burn so you will get the resultant product as ch2 double burn ch that is ch2 that is ch3 so therefore so therefore we get the alkene which is basically terminally located terminally located so it can call but one in but one in so therefore this kind of product is called Hoffman's elimination product. We call this as, as Hoffman's Hoffman's elimination product. Elimination product. So therefore, you have to understand that when Hoffman's elimination product will take place, when Hoffman's elimination product will take place, and when the sweats of elimination takes place. Very clear. If it is chlorine bromine iodine with small base, obviously the product will be the sweats of elimination product where we consider the hyperconjugation stability of the alkene and when the living groups here these are the basically the living groups these are the basically living groups these are the living groups so obviously when they are the these living groups basically are the fluorine over here and living groups are fluorine n plus p plus s plus in those cases it need it creates high electronegativity on these elements and obviously the hydrogen beta hydrogen become very much acidic as i'm showing over here so you get the alkene terminally located alkene or terminal alkene so the initial set of is was basically central alkene centrally located alkene and it's terminally located alkene case three if i take similar kind of compound like i took in example one let's say ch2h it is chcl or beer or i anything you can take and then if i take ch h 
let's read CH3. So in this case, what happens if you take again alcoholic KOH, but here the alcohol is TBO minus K plus, this salt is, and the solvent is TBOH, and heating, in this situation, it will be getting basically not this hydrogen, not this beta hydrogen, and this beta hydrogen will be abstracted. Why? Because you know this TBO minus is a bulky base. TBO minus is like this. This, it is TBO minus, very, very bulky base. So obviously, this very bulky base cannot attack this H because the methyl is over here, which is sterically repelled. So therefore, if it is sterically repelled, so it has to take the another choice, which is more acidic and less, less crowded. So obviously, the mechanism will be obviously E2 and you get the product CH2 dolphin CH, it is CH2 CH3. So that means with, with bulky base, with bulky base, with bulky base x equal to CLBRI for Rx gives Hoffman gives Hoffman product Hoffman's product so therefore you should remember that three cases I have discussed one is Swerzef another is Hoffman another again forceful Hoffman because of the bulkiness of the base we are using tertiary butoxide so when bulky base is used, Hoffman's elimination or terminal alkene is produced when it is small base of the chloride were added case. So in that case, Schwarzer product and if the fluorine N plus P plus S plus are the living groups. So in that cases, basically those are the, the living groups, then in that case, basically you get terminal located alkene. <coughs> so for, for your information, Every cases we had the elimination called E2. You can easily see that this chlorine and this hydrogen or this hydrogen which are, we are considering here we are this hydrogen which we are considering and this chlorine they are basically anti to each other in the same plane. So therefore it is E2 elimination. Obviously it is E2 elimination. Over here also you can see that this chlorine and this hydrogen they are anti or nitrogen plus they are anti. So therefore it is elimination pattern is E2. You should remember since we are using base obviously it is it also over here because this chlorine and this hydrogen they are again in the same plane and anti so therefore the elimination is E2. So we can say that the application of E2 to produce alkene and Schwarzschild and Hoffman's elimination both takes place through E2 mechanism.